Welcome back to According Movies Recap. Today, I will show you an action, sci-fi, thriller film from 2008, titled Death Race. Let's start. In the year 2012, the American economy collapses. Unemployment hits record high and crime rates spiral out of control. The prison system reaches breaking point, so private corporations now run all correctional facilities for profit. Terminal Island Penitentiary streams a series of cage fights live on the internet, and prisoners fighting to the death become a rating sensation. However, the audience soon becomes bored and demands more, and that's how the death race is born, a show where inmates race each other to death in specially modified cars in order to win their freedom. In today's race, there are only two cars left. One is driven by masked inmate Frankenstein and his navigator Case, and the other is Frank's oldest rival, Machine Gun Joe. Both of them are nearing the finish line and ready to do anything to win. But for some reason, the weapons in Frank's car aren't working. He improvises by releasing the car's back shield, which hits Joe and earns Frank some momentary advantage, but Joe hasn't given up yet and still has the offensive leverage. Case knows Joe will destroy them and wants out. But Frank refuses to let Joe win, so Case ejects herself out of the car as Frank crosses the finish. Line at the same time, Joe shoots it, winning yet exploding in the process. Some days later, industrial worker and ex-convict Jensen Ames find out the steel mill he works at is closing, and they aren't even paying the workers the full amount they owe him. As the workers start getting agitated, the anti-riot police arrive and begin beating them up at the smallest of provocations and seeing his co-workers get hurt causes Jensen to jump into the fray and beat some cops in return. Night has already fallen by the time he makes it home. After saying hello to his wife, Jensen checks on his baby upstairs, unaware that a masked criminal is taking this chance to break into the house and kill his wife. When Jensen returns to the kitchen, the man knocks him out, puts the murder weapon in Jensen's hand, and leaves after making a shooting gesture with his gloved hand. Jensen wakes up moments later to find the police arresting him for the murder of his wife. Six months later, Jensen is transferred to Terminal Island Prison, where he is received by guard Ulrich, who sprays him with freezing water, allows another cop to hit him, and takes him to a cell with three other prisoners who intend to beat him up. Ulrich comes to check on him, wanting to enjoy seeing him in trouble, but Jensen is a good fighter and has knocked all his cellmates out. They flank the truck with their cars, doing their best to dodge any incoming attacks. And when a trap manhole appears in front of them, each of them hits it with two wheels, getting the for needed to activate it. This causes the tap to come up and the truck to crash against it. Now. The second stage of the race is over, and Jensen and Joe will be the only drivers making it to the third. Later in the evening, Joe comes over to Jensen's pit to point out his voice suspiciously. Sounds a lot like Frank's, but he doesn't push for answers. Meanwhile, Ulrich and Hennessy decide that they need to kill Jensen since the Frankenstein mask can still be worn by someone else in the future. The following day, before the race starts, Ulrich puts a bomb under Jensen's car. While Hennessy distracts everyone with a speech about racing being their life's purpose. When she mentions this may be the first time someone may win their freedom with a fifth victory, Jensen realizes that they always rig the races to eliminate anyone that could possibly win for the fifth time and that's why nobody has ever achieved it before which means he won't be allowed to win. Today either. Coach hears this conclusion and, once they're allowed to go back to the auto shop, decides to show Jensen a very important detail on a video of Grimm's death. This gives him an idea. 
for a plan, and he asks Lists to add a half-gallon reserve tank to his car before going to Joe's. Pitt to ask him to collaborate with him again. While Jensen is changing into Frank's clothes, Hennessy visits him to give him his release papers and to make him a new offer, if he wins. She wants him to stay in prison and continue to be Frankenstein because the track is where belongs. She claims he isn't daddy material and an ex-con couldn't give his daughter a good life. So choosing to stay would be an incredible, unselfish act of love. Jensen goes to join. The race, without giving her an answer yet, but he does put away the release papers in his pocket. When he gets in his car, Case admits Hennessy also spoke to her and asked her to stop Jensen if he was about to win, but he doesn't worry about it. As soon as the race begins, Ulrich starts controlling the manholes so they only activate when Joe goes over them. He opens fire at Jensen. As soon as he is able to, damaging his back shield so much that Jensen decides to drop it. However, Joe easily dodges it, having already learned the trick from when Frank did the same. Hennessy activates a defense manhole for Jensen to take in order to keep the viewers interested. But Joe launches a rocket at it, destroying it. He has more rockets to go, and he launches them all at Jensen, who dodges them and lets them hit a wall. This wall was the one behind Grimm when he died. And it's already weakened because of that old explosion. So today Jensen and Joe have been calculating their attacks for them to land on the weak spot, and now the rockets hit it for a final blow that opens a hole and allows them to escape the prison. Furious, Hennessy ends the stream and sends all available cops after them before pressing the bomb detonator but nothing happens. Coach and his men had already removed the bomb from the car and deactivated it. Joe and Jensen make it to the bridge, but the police cars are getting closer, so it's time to pull the next. Part of his plan, Jensen releases that extra half-gallon reserve tank, which hits the cars behind them, causing an explosion and a wall of fire that prevents any other cars from chasing them. Both convicts manage to cross the bridge gates and take two different roads so that all the helicopters only follow Jensen, who is the most important of the two. As Joe drives away, Case agrees to help Jensen with the last part of his plan because she owes it to Frank and Hennessy has already given her the release papers. So they'll be obliged to let her go. When they are passing by some construction cranes, Jensen Jumps off the car under their shadows and hides in there while Case takes his place at the wheel. She only gets to drive a couple of miles more before the helicopters stop her with a wall of fire, but when she comes out of the car with her hands up, she's wearing Frank's clothes and mask. Since most people don't know about the identity exchange, the cops arrest her and take her back to the prison allowing Jensen to escape and meet with Joe so they can board a freight train together. Back in the prison offices, Ulrich says the ratings are off the charts and congratulating. Gifts are already arriving. Hennessy opens the gift box he's brought and finds the bomb. Ulrich had put under Jensen's car, which then explodes, killing them both. Outside in the track, Coach can be seen having pressed the detonator. Six months later, Joe and Jensen have made a new life in Santa Rosalia, Mexico. They work together as mechanics in their own auto shop. And Jensen has regained custody of his daughter. Case visits them too after her. Release papers finally get processed, bringing with her a racing car for them to check out. Thanks for watching.